Hey, did you just buy your first sled and you feel like you could gain a little bit more confidence before you can get out there and really enjoy yourself? That's totally normal with anything new. So I'm going to get out for a ride today and I'm just going to talk about some of the things that helped me get over that. How's it going ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. My name is David Clark and in today's video we're going to do a couple of things. So firstly, I know Victor you were asking me if I can get out and do some riding. So finally we've got some snow, some trails starting to open up here and I can get the sled out. So we're going to do that. I am going to give this 509 Delta R4 Ignite helmet and the range jacket and bibs are real trial. I've been out into some uh, minus 15 weather, so not horrible, but some snow and sleet as well. And I can give you a better commentary on what I thought about that. And the other thing I want to do is talk to some of you guys that are brand new to snowmobiling and you're trying to build your confidence a little bit. There's some fantastic snowmobile channels out there. Some of them are more useful than others to the guy that's just bought his very first snowmobile. I love to watch Next Level Riding Clinics. He is a fantastic rider and a really good presenter. I was watching a video the other day on building some confidence on steep terrain. <laughs> steep terrain, guys. I'm at the age the last couple of years. I'm starting to make noise when I put my gear on. I'm not riding down any mountains. So this video is going to be a lot more relevant for some riders than others. I mean, some of you are really experienced. You know, you've been riding dirt bikes and ATVs and snowmobiles since you were a kid. Um, but it's a big spectrum, right? On one end, you got these guys that are really fearless and you watch these videos where they're jumping off mountains. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you got guys like me. I didn't buy an ATV or a snowmobile till I was in my 40s, never rode one before. And I was a little intimidated by it when I got it home. There's a lot of people right now because of COVID, we can't travel. There's a lot of people buying sleds and a lot of you are buying older used sleds. So the reason buying an old snowmobile is important is really if you've got an issue with confidence riding the snowmobile, it's going to come down to two things, right? Lack of confidence in your own ability, which really, again, is just about time and practice and lack of confidence in the machine. Two things I learned really quick that'll make your sled a lot more reliable, fresh gas and fresh spark plugs. So the gas that they have nowadays with the ethanol will break down fairly quickly. So make sure you got a fresh tank of gas in it. Good spark plugs make a huge difference in an old two stroke. You know, I did a video recently and I had said, you know, if your plugs foul, then you can't really clean them. You should replace them. And I got so much feedback on that video. I'm actually going to do a follow up because I do have a sand blaster for cleaning spark plugs and I have a brass wire brush. And yes, you can clean plugs and get them to fire again, but they're not going to be the same. Some of that depends on why they're fouled and how badly they're fouled. You can actually damage a spark plug trying to clean it. So I always carry a couple of spare sets on the sled. The other thing you can do to save yourself some headaches with spark plugs get a set of iridium spark plugs. They're more expensive. It's a tip I got from Doobie Boy 21 like years ago, and I kind of thought he was overselling them, but I'll be honest, I put a set in this old 670 and I have not fouled a plug since. There's some really small things like that that'll make a huge difference to how the sled runs. I'll give you an example. I had my sled out recently and it was running terrible. I couldn't get the RPM up over 6,000. Felt like it was running on one cylinder. So I jumped online to have a look and see if I could figure out what was going on. Now, obviously, if you get online on the forums, places like that, there are some really, really knowledgeable guys out there, but you have to be careful. So I was reading some of the comments around that similar issue, and some of the things I saw really shook my confidence, right? So crank seals are bad. Your compression is bad. You need a top end rebuild. And if you just bought a sled, that can really shake you. What it ended up being was my tether wasn't on right. So on my 05 Rev, and I know on some older machines, my brother's old sled had it too. They have what's called a DESS, or a Digital Encoded Security System, as part of the tether. They get worn out, they get dirty, they get corroded. If they're just not on there properly sometimes, it'll cause some of those symptoms that I was seeing. So yes, I could have put new crank seals in there. I could have rebuilt the top end. Instead, I opted to just wiggle my tether a little bit, and then the machine ran fine for the rest of the day. The other thing I found was doing my own work and my own maintenance, right? So getting service manuals, asking questions, hitting the forms, and doing my own work made me more familiar with the machine and I got a feeling pretty quick for what kind of things make it run not so good and what things will make it run better. Now, if you got a big piece of property that you can rip around on your sled with, then just go for it, right? But if you don't and you got to head down the road a couple of miles to get on a trail, the one thing that I got in the habit of that made me feel, again, more confident in my machine was I take a warm-up lap, right? So a few kilometers where you can get out there. Obviously, you're going to give the sled some time to warm up before you ride it. But then, you know, just take a route around your neighborhood that's a few kilometers where you can, you know, give it some throttle, get the RPMs up there, uh, warm the sled up, swing by your place, get off, do a walk around, make sure everything's fine, and then just go for it. Before I get out and ride, though, I just wanted to follow up with Dan. Dan left a comment on my Delta R4 Ignite helmet review. Okay, Dan, you had a couple of questions. So, one, you didn't mention this helmet can also be used with goggles if you remove the shield and add the included covers. So, yeah, this helmet does actually come with a couple of covers. What these are actually 
for is to remove the visor. So when you take the visor off, because it covers this portion of the helmet, they include those covers to cover that up. So I did follow up with 509 just to make sure I wasn't steering you wrong. The Delta R3 was actually marketed as more of a multi-configuration helmet. And with that one, yeah, you could take the shield off as well and it had covers for that. This helmet really is not meant to be used with goggles. Recessed sun shields are in many helmets. Yes, they are, um, but not all. I actually have a couple of helmets that don't have it. And I think it's a pretty useful feature. That's why I made sure that I mentioned it. How does this compare in accessibility? So the way they've used a slider here, um, you just basically slide your hand back and forth on the helmet and you can activate that shield. So it was really, really easy to use. And then you said, does it freeze up like my CKX on cold days when it's retracted? Um, all I can say is no. You know, I, I live up on the Bruce and we get some serious winter and I've been out in some really cold temperatures. Uh, I've been out in heavy snow, freezing rain, sleet. I've honestly never had that happen. Uh, not that it doesn't happen and, and not that your CKX isn't prone to it, but uh, I don't see looking at this helmet why it would be any more prone to that happening than anything else. You asked how it is for muffling sound. I, I mean, as good as anything is going to be when you're sitting on a two-stroke snowmobile, I think my BV2S might be a little bit better at muffling sound just because it's not really a true modular, um, but it's kind of like wearing a fishbowl. But, you know, I would say this helmet is good as anything. It's got a really nice pattern liner. Um, I wasn't conscious of it being any louder than any of my other helmets, that's for sure. All right, Dan, you finished strong. I enjoy your videos. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. I enjoy making my videos. But I think you should have put a few more miles on this helmet before the review. You know, and Dan, all I can tell you is I'm going to do unboxing reviews. Sometimes people will send me a product, and before I've had a chance to use it, I will show it to you guys. I will tell you what I think about it. I'll point out its features, what I see as its strengths and its weaknesses. And then when I do get a chance to get out and ride with it, I'll tell you more. So that's just the way I'm going to do it. Hopefully we can still be friends. But you know what? Thanks for taking the time to send me your feedback. All right, guys. So we've done everything we can to feel a little bit more confident in our machine. Now it's time to do the fun part. Let's get out there and ride. One of the first hurdles I get, had to get over, <laughs> literally and figuratively, was getting the machine up over a snowbank. I say hit a few snowbanks is not because it's a challenge, it's exactly the opposite. But it gives you a feel for what the sled feels like when it's not sitting flat and level. The other thing you can do is just get one ski up on the side. Get used to standing up on your machine. You know, I always laugh because I watch those videos like Dan on Next Level, like I was saying. And you see the stuff he got, he does. And the first couple of times I'm out, I get up like this a little bit and it's like, oh my God, my machine's tipping over. You know, just get used to standing up. Because then you can transfer your weight around and push the other side of it back down. Now, obviously, you got to be really careful if you're doing that on the side of the road. But anytime you can get your sled up over something, it just gets you more used to not being on flat and level. Obviously, it's always better to get it up into some snow rather than just ride on the road. And I used to, when I first got it, I kind of stuck to the roads until I got more comfortable. If you're gonna go off the road, be really careful when you transition back onto it, that there's nothing coming. You know, that was nothing, but if you've got like a bigger snowbank you have to go over, once you're going over it, you're kind of committed, you gotta keep moving. The one thing you're gonna wanna do is make some adjustments to your suspension. And that'll make you more confident in the sled. You know, both of my machines, I'm not a big, huge guy, obviously. I'm 5'9", 165, 170, depending how much junk food I eat. And both of my machines, the guys I bought them from, were quite a bit bigger than me. So what that means, they're a lot heavier. They're putting a lot more load on the springs on the sled than I do. So, you know, this sled does not have enough weight on the skis for me. I've got my 670 dialed in pretty nice. I have to make some adjustments on this. I've been putting it off because I want to do a video about it. But just try it, take it out for a run. Try changing a little bit of preload on the springs. Take it out again, see if it helps. Okay, I'm just about to the trail here. If you're wondering about this Delta R4 Ignite helmet, it's fantastic. I don't have it plugged in right now, 
and even not like it's a heated shield but even not plugged in it just doesn't fog the chin piece is out actually quite a ways from your face and I think that might be why but uh, I did have it out on a really cold day and it absolutely didn't fog. Now I'm still struggling with glasses, but the Delta R4 helmet I love. And the 509 gear as well. I gotta say honestly, I mean today's not too bad, I think we're about minus eight. But I was out minus 15 on the weekend for a good few hours. And it was just toasty and warm. Really, it's really comfortable gear, like I said. So yeah, after I've had a chance to get out and use the gear and the helmet, I gotta say honestly, it really aligns with my initial expectations. It's really nice gear. Now you gotta get over that fear of getting stuck, right? When you get off of a trail. But sure, it could happen, I could get stuck here. But I didn't. You know, I'll be honest with you guys, I'm not the most experienced rider. And that's not the point of the channel. But you know one thing I am really expert in? I've got uh, decades of getting over being overcautious. So the main tip I can give you is live in the moment, right? Because if you're an overcautious, like it's really smart to be prepared and to be careful. Those things keep you safe. But if you worry too much about what's gonna happen two hours down the trail, you know, what if my sled stalls? What if I get stuck? If you spend all your time focusing on that, you're not gonna enjoy yourself, which is what you bought the sled for. So just get out, look around, enjoy the day. Like, it's a beautiful day out today. You know, I'll give you a quick shout out too. Check out that Alaska guy. I'll put a link to his channel. Man, that'll cure you fast. You see where he rides his sled, and you'll feel like a real wuss if you're not getting out on yours. You know, guys, I can give you all the tips I can think of, but at the end of the day, you just gotta get out there and do it. Think things through, don't be stupid. Don't go anywhere you're really not comfortable with. But get out there and have some fun. I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of guys started chuckling about me puttering along at 55, 60 kilometers an hour, talking about building confidence. But yeah, we're just all gonna be at different stages along that learning curve, right? And you know what, guys, it doesn't matter, really. Like, just get out there and have fun on it. That's the main thing. Ride it whenever you can. Get out and ride it, and your confidence will just come. Okay, I think that's about it. I think we're gonna call it a day. So yeah, the two big things for me to get over before I could really get out there and enjoy myself, get the machine up over a snowbank. For that, just start small, work your way up. Uh, the skis will really pivot and flex a lot more than you think it is. It's a lot easier to go over a snowbank than I thought it was. And then the other thing is just getting over that fear of getting stuck. And guys, it's really not a big deal. The first time I took my sled out, I got it good and stuck. And it really threw me for a while, right? I didn't even think the sled would get stuck in the snow, but they do, it's really common. All right, one last thought to leave you with. I ride by myself a lot, I know, but whenever you can, always ride with somebody else. Firstly, you're gonna feel more confident because you got somebody to help you out if you get into trouble. Secondly, if you're riding with a more experienced rider, might help you push to get out of your comfort zone a little bit and help you develop your riding skills. All right, guys, I think that's a wrap on another video. So if you're brand new to snowmobiling, I hope that helped you out a little bit. Uh, if it did, take a second to hit that thumbs up. If you've been riding for years and you didn't get much out of that, then you know I hope you at least enjoyed coming for a ride with me. And if you've got any tips of your own that helped you get a little bit more confident when you started riding, post something in the comments below. Other than that, until next time, I'm Dave Clark. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Getting snuck, <clears throat> snuck, getting snuck. My BV2S maybe be a little bit, maybe be. <clears throat>
All right, I'm pretty comfortable with this sled now. I'll get off on pretty... <clears throat> get off. Probably not a good way to put it.